Move in! Move! Magazine! But when you come to the building, military strats, they don't really work. Push around the corner like this, we've traded. Why some military tactics do not work in airsoft. Of course, we've got to thank our number one sponsor on the channel, Block Tactical. Never looked back since using them. They really do not fog. I love them. They're an amazing company. So yeah, if you want 10% off your Block purchase and you want to have a zero fog experience, use code NN10 at checkout. What's going on, guys? In today's video, I want to touch on a topic that's a little bit of a grey area with an airsoft. For a bit of context, for anyone who's new to the channel, I served my time in the British Army in a regiment called the Rifle where you're like heavily trained in woodland fighting scenarios and urban fighting scenarios. This can be broken down to something called FIWAF, which is fighting in woods and forests, and then CQB, which is like close quarter battles. I think it's changed from FIWAF now. There's like Obua and all these other different um, mnemonics and stuff like this. One thing that I've noticed within the airsoft scene, which is an absolute must from the army, and I wouldn't even call it a tactic, it's just good drills, is to zero your toy. So what do I mean by zero your toy? I mean dial in your sights. I see a lot of airsofters that have the sights on their toy for show, but they're not actually using it. They're not actually using the sight and the sight isn't dialed in to their most common contact radius. So for example, what do I mean by that? Mine's 30 meters. So all my sights and my guns, because of how I play, I'm more of a CQB assault player. I dial in I dial in my sight to a 30 meter radius battle space. If you, you guys understand what I mean. <laughs> right, so um, we're done zeroing our gats. Us and the boys are pretty fucking excited to be honest. Uh, so we're just gonna have a little bit of fun games now. We're just gonna try and hit the metal targets and we're gonna listen out for the audible plink and we're gonna try to do it moving. It's about 20 meters where we're gonna start in a doorway over there. It's about 20, 30 meters, try and hit the first one whilst keep moving in that standing position. And then we hit the second one. If you miss, you've got to stay static until you hit it. And then keep, once you've hit it, keep moving forward and then try and hit the last one on the left. Bit of fun. Uh, let's see how this goes down. Nice. There we go. There we go. Missed one. I'll take that, I'll take that. Missed one, I'll take it, I'll take it. So, with Airsoft, obviously, it looks exactly like real steel, especially if you're using a GBBR, right? I feel like comparing Airsoft to the Army is kind of comparing, like, NFL to rugby. They kind of look the same, but the science is completely different, right? So, let's start with Airsoft. Obviously, the millimetre of the BB is 6 millimetre. The millimetre is completely different, which then converts into the velocity. Like, the BBs fly at, like, different speeds compared to real bullets, right? Fighting in woods and forests. The reason why we do this is because there is no cover, so we have to pepper pot in sections called Charlie and Delta to provide cover for each other. Right, so uh, I've given out a target indication to where the target's going to be. I've told Charlie, who's the LMG gunner, to suppress that general position 12 o'clock, right? And we're now going to bound forward to that bun line there, which stands for built up natural defense. Oh, he got it in one! <laughs> <laughs> right, and all of us are basically going to sprint towards that cover, and then Hades is going to take it from there. So you can see now the guys are on that bond line, simulated suppressive fires going down. At this point, this is where I'll take over and I'll decide that essentially the enemy's too great a force for us to deal with today. We're going to live to fight another day. So they're going to bound back in their pairs about 10 meters or so, given this terrain. So the first pair will bound back. They'll start laying down that covering fire because the enemy at that point will start to push forward. Uh, and, then as soon, and then the second team, the second pair will abandon that cover. They are going to bound past their, their mates, okay? They'll take up a position, lay down the suppressive fire, and that's essentially gonna repeat until the, the gents are out of contact. This is a tactic that I personally think actually works, which I've taken from the army, and you can use an airsoft, and it kind of does work, because when you wanna bound back out of a situation, done correctly, it really does work. Which you're gonna see a demonstration of in this video of my good friend Hades in Gran Canaria. If you don't know who Hades is, go subscribe to his channel. He's also a British Army veteran. So what we're gonna do now is just a little bit of practice, okay? Just as a quick side note, boys, the geezers on the left have no military experience, and this is just a tongue and cheek demonstration of how to pepper pot. Okay, so we're obviously out here, Gran Canaria, getting ready for the Ultra Milsim, okay? And we just wanna do a little bit of pre-deployment training. They're gonna get a simulated contact, okay? So when they get that simulated contact, they're gonna have to do something called RTR, which an RTR is essentially reaction to enemy fire, okay, to effective enemy fire. The section commander, who for today will be Nico, 
he'll make a decision whether they push on and fight through or they make a tactical withdrawal, okay, to find a better position or just to live to fight another day. Keeping a nice straight line. So when you get a contact, take a knee. Contact front! Charlie, suppressive! The rest of you to the bun line, let's go! Charlie, move up! Right, gents, so at this point, with the LMG gunner now in position, we're all laying down that suppressive fire. I've just taken a look over the bun line. Greater enemy force than we can deal with, so we're going to live to fight another day. I'm going to issue them their commands, and we're going to bound back. Right, gents, listening in! We're going to be bounding back. Delta are going to be moving first. Delta, stand by, prepare to move! Move! So once Delta are in, are in position, Charlie, move. prepare to move! Move, move in! Move! Magazine! Move! If there are any veterans watching that also play airsoft, let me know down below, what was your training like? Did it differ because you're from a different country? Have you had these same experiences playing airsoft? Comment down below, let's have a chat about it. This pepper plotting uh, technique that you're seeing, that obviously does come from the army, I do, I do think this works. I do think this is good tactics that you can utilise in a woodland environment for you are fighting on woods and forests. But when it comes to CQB, my personal experience of playing airsoft for like seven, eight years now or something, I think like the skills and drills that you're taught in the army, they don't quite line up with how, just how it goes down within airsoft. In the army, you're taught to dominate the area. Like when you push the threshold, every individual man's got a different job, whether he's like opening the door, whether he's the guy with the grenade over there, the point man's shoulder, um, whether they're split into Charlie or Delta, or one guy's looking which way the hinges turn. There's loads of different jobs within the sections, and then once you, you go one, two, three, and you push through the door, whichever whichever dynamic entry you want to do, um, you then push through, you know, the people get their jobs done, and you dominate the area, and then you go again for different angles, so on, communicating with your teammates, what you see around you. Obviously, like, these kind of tactics change over time, information changes. This is stuff that I got taught in 2013, so a long time ago. I learn a lot from just watching different channels and also information comes from the private sector first before it ends up going to the public masses anyway. So what are the key differences? I think when it comes to CQB, pushing a threshold and committing to a threshold without any intel of what's going on inside the room is where in airsoft you kind of fail. Basically, obviously this is airsoft, right? Those tactics that you've just learned in FIWA, fighting in woods and forests, bounding pepper in 100% works. But when you come to the building, military strats, they don't really work. And I know this because I've died a lot from when I left the army and played airsoft. I was dying loads, pushing thresholds like I got taught in the army, right? It really doesn't work. So, for example, if you could take the camera around this corner, pretend you're an enemy, right? Be close to the wall in the corner, right? If I pie out this angle slowly, like I got taught in the military. I'm dead now, you've, you've seen me, aren't I? Dead. Or a trade, right? Or you've stacked upon the wall and you push around the corner like this. We've traded, right? So, now come here so you can see me, stand there. So I adopted this technique where I'll stay in high ready and I'll peek the corner of my body part that I can move the fastest, right? Data collect, I don't see anything. And I'm cutting the angle with my head, keeping my body hidden, right? So if you go around this corner now, go back around there like you're the bad guy, right? Okay, right, so I peek, I've already, I can see your sleeve. I can see your sleeve. I've seen your sleeve in your watch. And now I know you're there and I haven't exposed any of my body and I know you're there, right? So I'm gonna take a knee, bang bang right and i still haven't crossed the threshold endangering my life and kind of just uh preserving my life trying to stay alive for the boys right so i can carry on and shoot other people try it don't fully commit to thresholds and airsoft you're just gonna die and i know this because i just fucking died loads doing it right early on in the day playing airsoft i would just die loads pushing these thresholds like I got taught in the army because as soon as you fully commit to a threshold, you're then risking the 50-50 trade, right? So in an airsoft, when you shoot someone with a BB, it might hit their, like their 
uh, body armor, a plate carrier, or a mag, and they might not feel it, and they might not call their hit. So as soon as you push that threshold, you are giving them a chance to kill you, right? As soon as you push that threshold. So I adopted this technique called the reverse pop shot, which you'll see in this video, I'll explain. But basically, it's where I will go up to the angle with my entire body covered and my rifle in high ready, right? And I'll, I'll push my head and eye just around the corner, and it'll be my eye that goes around the threshold, and I can data collect what's in the room, and then my, I'm fully back in cover straight away, so I can't get shot, right? As soon as I do that, and my eye collects the data in the room, I can kind of tie out the angle with my eye, right? <laughs> I'm like, okay, don't see anything, don't see anything. See a guy, he's either gonna do a couple of things. He's either gonna, guys, throughout the last few videos you've seen, I've been plugging something called Stale and Move Fast, which is my tactical brand. That's also where I got this hat from, Lop God. And I decided for the people that have supported me along this journey to create a club, SLMF Club. If you have an order number, you'll have free access to a WhatsApp group that we're all chilling in. There's already a fair few people in there and I'll be vlogging in there every day. Fitness, tactics, being a tack nerd, airsoft events all around the world, being a general LARP enthusiast, Milson with the boys techniques and tactics will all be in that group. If you've supported Stay Low, Move Fast previously and you have an order number, you'll have free access. Link will be pinned in the top of the description. React and just spray at the, at the threshold, but I'm already back in cover. Or he's gonna be like, what the fuck just happened and not react quick enough. And I can just high low, take a knee, pop back into the threshold where the danger is, couple of shots, bang, 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 and then flick myself my rifle back out of harm's way. And I've had a real good success rate doing this. Um, so here's a video demonstrating that. Let me break down the strats. So I pre-peat the angle of my head, only exposing the left side of my face, target spotted. I then line the target up through the cover. I bump the stock out with my shoulder, then bring the red dot in line. I then snap my body back into cover as quickly as possible because obviously I don't want to get shot. And that's how to outplay anybody that's got an angle on you first. If I come into this room, like he was in the military, stacked up dudes, whatever, and you go boom, my and, sh and shoot these targets, he's got a chance to shoot me back, right? And you don't, you don't want to die. Especially if you're a Milsim, you want to be able to support the boys, right? But I can't see the targets, targets can't see me, right? I move the thing that, that moves the quickest is my head like this. Okay, I've seen one target to the right there. I'm gonna line the target up through the cover, bump off, move my, everything out the way. He's like, where the fuck did I just get hit from? And I'm already out, back out the room. Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm up. Okay, there's the guy just hit. Now I see the guy in the middle. I'm gonna line him up through the wall. Right? Okay, next one, corner. Right? Obviously also in airsoft, I think there's the lack of fear of death, which completely changes the environment that you're in. Everyone knows that they're not gonna die. So just the craziest plays end up happening, which would never happen in a real life scenario. Like people can just be mad necky. Uh, people will just sprint across thresholds, slide on their knees. All these slidey actions, man. I'm not doing that. You'll see some really aggressive play, which would never happen in real life. You want to take advantage of this over aggression, which uh, is perfect for someone who understands how to reverse pop shot because basically you're manipulating the cover around you whilst constantly being safe, which really you're using cover like a personal right shield. If anyone's played Gears of War, you understand what I mean. Um, if you just stick to cover constantly, as you're moving around and you you need to look for cover and just stick to it, and then when you, you identify a threat that's close to you, keep your body in the cover, data collect with your head, line up the target through the cover, push out of the cover as quickly as you can, one or two shots, boom, back into cover, and you will die way less in the airsoft game, which you would never do in real life. There's no way in real life you would stick your head <laughs> around the cover trying to loot for targets because obviously 7.62 will go through walls and yeah, you'll be pink missed. So obviously you never get taught that in the real steel. And this is the differences. Some real steel 
training can make you a bit stiff and airsoft. I think, you know, uh, and this is the difference, it's kind of shaking off that stiffness and thinking outside the box. Green medic! Green one on your team. How do you just wrap it underneath? Thing is, I'm not on your team. utilizing skills and drills just from playing that you learn from playing you know like you can bend bbs which is really fucking cool which obviously you can't bend bullets it's not wanted right but in airsoft because of six millimeter and the way the hop up works you can bend bbs so when you're coming to a threshold if it's arching to the left let's say it's like a 60 meter engagement and it's round it's round like a corner like you would get at the oh, i can't remember what the site's called uh UCAP, I think it's UCAP prison, there's like a long, there's like a long bit where it kind of arcs around. If you tilt your rifle to the left, you can bend the BBs around the cover, right? So that means you can push an angle, just walk in, heel to toe in, angle your rifle to the left, you can suppress that uh, target without even seeing them because you're arcing the BBs around the corner, which is something you just can't do in airsoft, right? So then this changes the whole world of pine also, like the world of pine for people who don't know what pine is. It's what you get taught in the military where you kind of move and then your feet follow and you pie out the 90 degree angle. Well, for airsoft, this also doesn't really work because it's just way too slow uh, and you're probably just gonna trade or they're gonna see your elbow first if they're camping in the corner. And this is why I adopt the peeking with my head because it's the s smallest target on my body. Obviously, if I get hit in the face, I'm not gonna fucking die, so it's worth the risk. And I can move it the quickest whilst the rest of my body is in cover. And I've actually adopted this from Speedsoft. So Speedsofters do this really well as they'll pre-peak angles of their heads trying to data collect where the enemies are and then they'll adjust and make tactics on the spot for that scenario, which obviously you would never get taught in the army. But then again, this isn't the army, this is airsoft. That's the, and that's the beauty of airsoft really, is all these dynamic different strats that you can take from the different worlds of airsoft and have in your quiver, you know? You don't wanna just be a one trick pony. You wanna be able to utilize all these different skills and drills for different scenarios. And that's honestly why I'm fucking hooked, to be honest. There's nothing more fun than traveling the world with the boys, going to crazy milsome events, and just having that team cohesiveness that uh, we all once felt in the army. That's I really think Airsoft is a great place for veterans, and if you're a veteran watching and you haven't tried Airsoft, try Airsoft. You will love it, I promise. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, hit subscribe, and uh, yeah, let me know if you enjoyed this style of video. I'll see you next time. Peace. Ooh. Eh, eh, eh. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Got you there, didn't I? With those little words of command? Yeah, you did. Did, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, we are being super picky there. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> he is he dead. Did. He did. You got that bun line before anyone even started moving. It's just you going. He's oh. moving. <laughs> got the enemy in a problem. Oh my god. Because they get to the bun line fucking rapid, so.